I, I rise with some hesitancy because I feel that I'm likely to be chastised for rambling, saying the wrong thing and going on too long. But let me see if I can entertain you. I actually think that this is a very important and serious moment in a discussion on a very important and serious matter. And I don't feel as though this bill is actually going to resolve it, and I've been critical throughout on a range of issues, and I feel as though the government have wasted opportunities, but I'm not going to remind you all of that. At this point in the bill, and having listened to the considerations in the other place, I think that we should recognise, have a certain humility in recognising, that it is the failure of government or parliament to deal with the arriving by irregular routes by so many people that is seen by so many citizens in this country of making a mockery of border control that has led people to actually welcome the Rwanda solution as at least somebody trying to do something. People will say to you, what would you do about the boats crossing the channel. And it's fair enough for people to ask if something appears to be a deterrent, maybe we should try it. As it happens, I agree with Lord Horham that there are not enough legal routes. I personally would like to open up a debate about more economic migration for unskilled workers. It might not go down well with my fellow citizens, but I'd like to try and win that argument. I'm fed up of having to describe people who want to come into this country as asylum seekers when I know that many of them want a better standard of living. And why shouldn't they have that? And I defend them. But the point is that we don't even have that debate here. Here in this House, all of the emphasis is on international obligations and the rule of law with little discussion on the obligations to the sovereignty of this country or the rights of British citizens of all ethnicities who worry about the fact that borders aren't controlled. And for those sighing, can I remind you, in a different context, people are perfectly happy to grandstand about nation states, national sovereignty and the importance of border control, but that's only when you're talking about Ukraine, you see. Different question. On the Rwanda scheme, as it happens, I do not, while I do not think that subcontracting out our responsibilities uh, regarding refugees to another country is against the nature of God, I actually don't like it. I think it's largely a cowardly decision. Despite what I've said, I wouldn't choose this method. I've actually argued against such uh, an approach before, over many years in fact, because I've always thought that any organisation that outsources or subcontracts its obligations on migration, um, uh, particularly to heavily beleaguered countries, to police its borders on their behalf, is actually washing their hands of a problem that they should not do. But when I was criticising other places for doing it, I was actually criticising the EU, Fortress Europe, which has for decades been, had a history of dumping asylum seekers on its non-EU neighbours. In 2016, the EU signed a deal with Turkey in exchange for £6 billion. President Erdogan, that Democrat, promised to stop Syrian refugees from crossing the Turkish border into Greece and Bulgaria, and anyone found to have entered Greece was illegally deported to Turkey. And the EU's outsourcing of its migrant policy to firstly Colonel Gaddafi, or when he died, warlords and militias, or EU-funded Libyan detention centres has been a humanitarian disaster, with torture and slavery at its heart. And as it happens, I think Rwanda is not in that category, but I'm always nervous about outsourcing to poor African countries that need the money. It seems unsavoury and cowardly. But the reason why these policies, um, which I feel are uh, avoiding difficult problems, are are greeted by people is because people want something to be done. I think it's equally avoiding the problem and washing our hands of the problem to describe everybody in small boats as genuine refugees, and anyone who doesn't say that is seen to be unkind. I think it's equally avoiding the problem 
when you don't have a conversation honestly about economic migration. And I think it's equally cowardly and just indulging in moral grandstanding to imply that evil Tories have turned into Nazis because they're actually putting forward a policy when nobody knows what is the policy to put forward. I think this does not help improve the level of debate and discussion about a very difficult uh, situation. Now, finally, shortly, I wanted to support uh, D1, which was on the right to vote, because I actually do think that it is ridiculous that we don't encourage people to have the right to work. And in this instance, when the government says that all claims should be settled before six months, could I say to the government that if it could get all of the claims of the tens of thousands of people settled in a matter of months, we might not have a crisis where people said, bring in the Rwanda situation. But because they go on and on and on for years, and nobody really trusts, no disrespect, the processes to be done efficiently by Home Office civil servants in the background, what happens is, is that people actually are sitting around for years unproductively. For those who think that this would mean that they might undermine wages and salaries of British citizens and British workers, always a concern. Let me tell you, when they're sitting around for months and years, most of them are working. They're just working on the black market, and that's perfectly re re legitimate because we won't let them work uh, uh, responsibly. Or if they're not working, they're sitting around doing nothing for years and years. That is not a very positive contribution to the UK, even if you are going to ask them to, to leave after their uh, asylum status has been assessed eventually. So I would urge the government in that instance to reconsider.